Welcome to Shelby Wright Garage. It's video number five on the Dodge Transporter truck, which is now affectionately named Deathbed. It was actually our initial offering for a name, but we did put it to you guys for a poll, and it turns out that is what you guys wanted after all. So the playlist is now renamed to suit. So I thought I'd take a little bit of time in this episode to get you guys up to date. A bit of stuff's been going on behind the scenes. We have been chatting to an engineer, as mentioned in some of our other videos. So I thought I'd give you a bit of the theory first up, just in regards to our talks with engineers and let you know where we're at. So when dealing with the engineer, we obviously came up with a few different hurdles and issues. Thankfully, he's a bit of an old school guy, so he's got an open mind. He's happy to deal with something a bit out of the box like this one is. Now, a couple of the issues that turned up was that this Dodge is listed as a one and a half ton truck. If we look at some of our original brochures, it gives it around about five and a half tons rating, generally speaking. Now, we're looking at about six and a half to seven ton GVM. So we're doing a GVM upgrade. We're doing an extended wheelbase. And in actual fact, we're now going to do an extended chassis. But before we get to that, let's raise some of these issues from the get go. Because we wanted to increase our GVM, we need to do something called lamination to the chassis. So for anyone who's not familiar with lamination, it's a little bit different to boxing. And I'll just draw a couple of examples that are accepted by RMS. So we have our original chassis like this. Some of the types involve adding metal, like so. And out of about the seven options that are available, we've decided that this kind of lamination is going to be the quickest, cheapest and easiest. And so when we look at the kind of lamination, say, in figure three, this was one of the options that we were considering. Trying to find a C-channel that runs on the inside of the factory Dodge chassis would have been quite difficult because it's obviously a different size. It's not a factory size where you can just go in and buy some RHS. It would have had to have been folded up. The other issue, of course, is the fact that the chassis tapers on the back end. So we decided to scratch that out straight away. We considered doing this kind of lamination in our second drawing. And again, we would have faced the same problem as this one. But one option that was broached was using the Chevrolet chassis that we had off to the side. And this would have allowed an extra 200 mil extension on the back of the Dodge chassis, which would have greatly assisted with things like the tow bar that we want to put on the back. Now the engineer did run all of this through his computer and unfortunately it came back as around 16 times safety margin. So for anyone who's wondering what that may mean is we're looking for a six and a half to seven ton GVM, we need a safety margin of three times. So we need a safety margin that allows this chassis to handle approximately 18 to 20 tons. We had 16 times our desired six and a half to seven tons. So it was just far too stiff, it was never gonna work. So we had to rule that out. So between all of these three, it always pointed back to this one as being the most sensible approach. And as we touched on earlier, one of the issues with this chassis is that it does taper and become smaller towards the back, which is where we want to mount our springs. So this created a further issue, which means that in order to get it past engineering, we need the entire chassis to be parallel, the entire length. Now we do still have the 36 Dodge chassis off to the side and that's where it's gonna now come in handy. If we have a look at this mark here on our 35 chassis, we're gonna to need to cut the middle section out of our 36. 
and we need to cut it along this 45 degree angle like we've marked on this dodge on the 35. Now the 35 will also be cut here as well and the entire chassis will be flipped around on the 36 which will now give us a total of an extra 200mm wheelbase that we can gain as well as our 200mm off the back end which is exactly what we wanted. And so now moving on to some of the technical drawings that we put forward to the engineer we can take a look at this first drawing here that has a proposed side view of the truck without the extended chassis in the middle and it was proposed to actually have the Chevrolet chassis on the outside you can see the size of the original Dodge chassis and the dimensions of the initial proposed wheelbase extension as well as how they related to the Chevrolet, they're all been done to scale and you can see with the proposed Chevrolet setup it was going to be 200mm longer on the back end but of course that got knocked back and so now as we move to our proposed updated drawings these now consider the extension by 200mm using the 36 frame we can see that that extension occurs in the middle part of the body in the forward section of the tray area and that's going to create a larger storage space and it's going to create a longer ramp tray as well of course and that's all to our bonus we can also see on a more detailed drawing where we're going to put our upright struts that are going to hold the tray and they're also going to create our lower struts which are going to hold our boxing area below the line of the chassis so everything that is in purple and everything that is in red is 50 by 50 and everything that's in green is the only exception which is 50 by 75 RHS and so in this drawing where we have all of our upright struts we can see all of our side profile views, our cutaways of each and every strut going up and going down along the side of the chassis and you can also see our top view of the ramp body it's got the green highlighted which is the 50 by 75 you can see it ends at the back of the chassis so once you zoom out on everything you can see how everything all ties up in relation to each other so we've pretty much gathered now at the end of all of these drawings we had a six times safety margin based on our chassis and based on our body and he's very happy to go ahead with that now there's obviously going to be some level of fine tuning but this pretty much gives you everything up to date as to where we are on the theory of how to build this truck we obviously can't have it too rigid we can't have it too soft but as we're sitting right now we're looking pretty darn good so happy days And now that we've got a lot of the theory out of the way, it's time to show you some of the practical side of things because we've been shopping. So a few of you might remember when we did the road trip in the BA gear, check it out if you don't recall. We picked up this rear chassis cut off an F450. So what we have here is an S110 Dana. It's currently a 4.1 ratio. And we've got the entire spring system, hubs, brakes, you name it. So we're going to be using the entire spring mounts, springs, shocks, suspension mounts, sway bar. Everything from this chassis is going to be transferred over onto the Dodge. Now of course being an F450 they come with 10 stud wheels. And our Dodge currently has 5 stud Chevrolet. So we're going to have to re-drill them and we've been given engineer approval. So that means all of our 10 tyres that we've got can be re-drilled, reused and we're going to run 20 inch rims on this truck. And that'll be instead of using our 19 and a half inch that comes with the F truck. And I'm also not a particular fan of this kind of pattern on the outside of the steel rim. And so in keeping with that, We've also gone and bought a brand new set of 7 truck tyres, 8.25 by 20 inch. So while the back end is going to be pretty straightforward, there's only about 2.5mm difference in width, the 
front end is a whole different ball game. Come and check this out. So the standard front end on the Dodge is pretty narrow. It's about that of a normal car. It's also got leaf springs all through the front. Our new front end on the other hand is significantly wider. The 4.3 ratio out of an F450 and it is an absolute monster. The track of that front F450 diff is actually around 2.2 metres wide at its widest point and a total 20 centimetres wider than the current setup on the front of this truck. Right where my hands are is exactly where the outer tyres are going to stop. And of course the implication for that is I'm going to have to build some custom front fenders and some custom running boards to suit. This front diff is also a coil front suspension and we're going to look at actually modifying the truck to retain that system which will hopefully assist us with this front steering system because we would have had difficulty clearing the leaf springs and of course we would have had difficulty mounting it as well because this is in fact at these marks here exactly in line with where the springs go on the 35 truck very far removed from the original mounting system so whilst we haven't been able to get a hold of some lower radius arms and the brackets to go onto the chassis yet we will be using the original F-Series style setup there but we are going to go a little bit differently on the top spring perch and we'll show you what we picked up there more shopping so we managed to get our hands on an F-350 wreck and we're actually going to use the springs, shocks and these perches on account of the fact that they don't sit quite as high as the original F450, they are capable of holding big blocks and we may even use this cross member and engine mounts as well. So after picking up this rolling shell of a truck, we should get a few goodies there to sort out our suspension. We've also got ourselves some lights off the F truck which may end up coming in handy. But moving back to this diff, we've got ourselves a pan hard bar, so we'll have to do a custom bracket to suit onto the chassis. We've also picked up random wrecking yard sway bar. I think it's off in a bar or something like that. And it will actually line up reasonably well with the original links. And these also line up beautifully with the chassis. So onto the steering itself, we've got this link, it's from a left hand drive truck. It's going to be this link here that has to move left and right, it's on the left hand side of the chassis. And of course we've got a steering box that needs to mount around about here. So what we've done is we've gone and picked up a Toyota Coaster steering setup. We're mainly after the steering box itself and so when we mount this steering box into the chassis we're going to flip it on its side. It will allow the pitman arm to move left and right instead of front to rear like it originally did. Then we're going to steal one of these tie rods, put that onto the pitman arm, which will then finish off with that tie rod in line with this joint here. And then we've got to build ourselves a custom idler arm and that should round up all of our steering. So with just a few minor parts that are missing, we pretty much have absolutely everything we need ready to go. Got lots of work ahead of us, but we should get ourselves a quality rolling chassis. Happy bloody days. Now since we're up to speed guys with everything that we're doing, we've got a little bit of time left. Let's go and strip this F truck out and go and source that replacement chassis extension piece from the 36 truck.
That'll do it. That'll do it. Alrighty guys, unfortunately the crappy Sydney weather is going to have to cut this video a touch short. We thought we had a bit of extra time there, but um, this rain's just come over the last few days. We've managed to get this F truck all chopped up, but uh, look, moving on, I think we'll have to chop up the 36 chassis in an upcoming video, so that's a bit of a negative there, unlucky. But uh, on a bit of a positive, uh, PK's come back from her overseas trip and uh, she very kindly gave me this shirt. It turns out that uh, I tell her this quite a few times when she calls me old. So uh, happy days, she's a bit of a cheeky bugger, but uh, all good. All right guys, so moving forward, uh, we will continue with the chassis works on the truck. So the next deathbed video will be probably fooling around with the rear end, getting the F-Series diff apart and slapping it all together. And uh, maybe looking at purchasing some of the steel, we might even do a bit of the lamination on the chassis like we talked about a little bit earlier. So like always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Catch you on the next one. Cheers. What are you doing, cat? What are you trying to get in the film for? You're still not my cat, you know. <laughs> Far out. Ah. Uh. I see you decided to help out again, did you, cat? Right where I gotta be. Fuck you, Rain.